Hi everyone, this is Will here again, and today we'll be looking at how to create widgets for Android. Now, for this tutorial, we'll be creating a very basic widget. All it's going to consist of is one text field that will display the current date, and it will update that uh, current sorry current current date and time, and it will update that. So let's get started. To begin with, I've created a basic Android project. And if you see here under layout, I've created a new layout called widget layout, which I'm going to be using here. And this is what the XML looks like. The only thing to notice here is for the background, I've set it as a custom drawable object called background shape. We'll be looking at that in a second. If you go to the graphical layout, you will see this is all it basically is, is a sh shape in the background followed by one text field. Now let's look at this background shape that I've created here. This background shape can be found under this folder here, backgroundshape.xml. Uh, very basic and straightforward, just using the shape element. I've set it as a rectangle with a border width of 2 and a color of white. Now another thing that Android widgets need is a widget info.xml file. This basically as the name states contains information and settings for the widget. So first of all we've set a width for it and a height for it. We've set the initial layout to our widget layout that we've created. And the most important part here is the update period milliseconds field. Now, this field specifies how long of time passes before our widget will be automatically updated. There is a minimum value of 30 minutes, which this number of milliseconds actually comes out to 30 minutes, so that's our minimum value. If you set it to less than that, it will just be ignored. Now one more bit of housekeeping, we need to go look at our manifest file. Notice this part in particular. We've got a receiver called my widget provider, which we haven't defined yet. We'll go take a look at that in a bit. Now we're specifying this as a receiver because it will receive broadcast, namely update broadcasts. And that's why we've specified this action as well because it's going to have to receive this broadcast right here that we've defined. Now let's take a look at our widget provider which is where all the magic happens here. Now notice that this class extends app widget provider. Every widget needs an object of this type. So first of all we have a method here called onUpdate. Now whenever our widget is updated a broadcast will be sent to this class and it will be this method that is, gets called and receives that broadcast. So this method then ha then controls what happens when our widget gets updated. So if you notice we have here, this is what we're doing when our widget, this is how we're updating our widget here. Uh, if you notice the for loop, we're looping through app widget IDs. And I notice that's plural and it's an actually an array of integers. This is because you can actually have multiple instances of a widget instead of just one. So what we want to do is not only update one of them, but update all instances that there may be. Hence the loop going through each of the widget IDs. And now you can see for, e for each widget ID, we're creating a new date object, and that's going to include the date and time which we want to which we want to update the text field text to. So you can see here we're setting the text view text of text view 01. That's the ID of our text field that we have. 
and we're setting the text to the current date and time. And this method call simply updates the view. Now, as I specified before, we have an update time of 30 minutes. Now, that might not be desirable. You may want to update it quicker. And in order to do that, you have, there are a few different methods of working around the restriction that we have. And one of these, which I'll show you, is by using a timer. So if I just comment this section out, you can see I have another section here that which uses a timer. So I'm calling method 2. Now, using a timer, you can schedule something called a timer task. And the timer allows you to schedule it basically whenever you want. So you can see we've set this timer here and we're scheduling a task at a fixed rate of every 1000 milliseconds or one second. And the task that we're scheduling is an update time task, which I've created. And we're just sending in a few parameters here. Now if you look at the update time task, it extends a timer task. Every task that you send to a timer to run has to extend this timer task. So in this custom class, we're overriding the run method. This is the method that gets called when the timer runs the task. So in this run method, again, we're doing the same thing we were before by taking a date and getting the text view and setting the text to the current date and time and then simply updating the widget again to reflect those changes. So there you have it. Uh, two methods of creating a basic widget and having it update either by receiving update broadcasts or by using a timer at intervals of your choosing. Thanks for watching.